everyone. Welcome to another tutorial. Um, today, uh, we will be learning how to install um, WinCollect agent on um, our Windows Server 2019 domain controller to be able to send logs into QReader. So I'm doing this on my test environment. I actually have a uh, Windows 2019 standard which I have promoted as a domain controller and we are going to be installing WinCollect agent on this domain controller. So we're going to do this to be a standalone WinCollect agent. So it's not being managed by um, our curator community edition. So this is just wing collect that's being installed on <clears throat> the server itself. So we'll do wing collect agent curator download. Um, you can go on here and download the wing collect agent so this is it this is a 7.2.9 exe file um, once you download this you go ahead and follow with this tutorial on how to install it uh, note that as always you're going to have to create a user account or if you already have an ibm user account you need that to be able to download this so since we already um downloaded this we'll go ahead and start the installation um, <clears throat> we'll close that we'll go back here and I'll bring up the Windows server okay first thing we need to do is run this as administrator so we we'll run this as administrator okay. When it loads up, we're going to hit next, we'll go to accept, hit next. So the username, you can specify which username you want to use for this. So if you have a like a service account you use in your environment to run applications like this, you can always go ahead and do that. If you were doing a managed um Curator Win Collect installation. I personally would advise you use a service account for this. In the future, um, I will make other videos on how to do a managed Win Collect installation. So for today, we're just doing the standalone. So we'll just leave it at Windows user and then we'll call this, we'll give it the organization name. So this is being installed on the bta.com. Go next. As you can see here, managed wing collect agent will be managed by the console. But for this tutorial, we're doing standalone. So it's being managed, it's not being managed by the curator console. So everything is being done locally. So we'll create the log source. The log source will be called um, <clears throat> PETADC01. The log source identifier is basically your. IP address. So for the log source, you can put any name. So this defaults to the name of the domain controller. So the name of this domain controller is that. In your environment, it may be different. So just to put that out there. And then here you put in the IP address of this server. So this is the IP address of this my Windows Server 2019 evaluation. And then so which logs do we want to send it to Curator? For my environment, I want to send in security, system, application, DNS server, because this is also my local DNS server. We'll do file replication and directory services. So you can select all of this. If you are installing it on a server that you may be an SQL server and you want to just get security and application logs, it all depends on what you want to do it for but for this for the basis of this tutorial we'll just do everything and then we'll go next so destination name this is where you want to do the IP address 
and the name of your curator. So I'll call this a curator.beta.com. That's the fully qualified domain name. It doesn't really matter, you can give it any name, but here you have to put in the actual host name or the IP address. So I'm just gonna do the IP address. Seven, the default port 514 TCP. You can always change it to TLS, just know you need a certificate for this. And this certificate, you have to create it in Curator on the console. And then all you need to do is copy that certificate parameters and paste it in here. In the future, I'll do a video about this. But for now, we're just going to use regular TCP. And note, you can also do UDP because Curator console can take both TCP and UCP. And UDP, sorry, TCP and UDP. Um, <clears throat> I believe that if you are installing Curator and you're working with Curator, you should at least know what TCP and UDP protocols are. Um, this is not a tutorial for that one. So we'll go next. Machine pool interval, we'll leave it at 3000. For the event rate tuning profile, this is a typical server, so we'll change that. It's not an endpoint. An endpoint will be maybe a local users, an M users machine. But for this, it's a server. So we we'll just we we'll use the typical server. It's not really a high event rate server. If it was like an enterprise domain controller, yes, you may want to select a high event rate server. But this, I use this basically for my lab. So it's just typical server. We'll go next. And then um, this is to configure the heartbeat parameters for the queue weather console to receive heartbeat events. So we'll just leave everything for default, five minutes in UDP. And we'll go next. This basically shows you a confirmation of everything you did select. And once all that is looks correct to you, you go next and you install. At this point, once the installation becomes complete, there's nothing else we need to do on this Windows Server machine. Now all you need to do is head back to your Curator console user interface. So we'll go to the admin tab and you should go to log sources. And if you look at my log sources, I really have nothing as of right now. So sometimes it might take anywhere between five to 10 minutes for this to populate into the log sources and curator, depending on your on other factors, including your, your network traffic and stuff like that, because curator has to automatically detect that log source. So we'll just let it run for a couple of minutes. I'll post the video here and oh, there we go. Oh no, that's not it. So I'm going to post the video here and I will be back once the log source is all set up. So after like two minutes, I can see now that um, I can begin to see, or I'm beginning to see some log sources from my domain controller, which is 192.168.1.13. So if I go on here and add a filter, and then we'll filter by um, log source index, uh, it's not in there yet. So we'll go filter by IP address, we'll do source or destination IP address, we'll do 168.1.13, and you can see in here that if I filter that to the last five minutes, it has been picking up some logs from my domain controller. Um, even though it says the event name and the event category and descriptions are unknown. Um, so sometimes it might take, like I said before, it might take a couple of minutes between two to five minutes, depending on your network traffic and how 
much speed your curator console has, how fast it can be able to detect that log source. And once it detects it, apply the correct DSM for that log source. So we can see on here that it's already getting the logs from the server, even though they're still unknown. So curator is still processing the logs and trying to understand them. And then at which at that point, it is going to definitely recognize them and then detect them as an actual log source. So go back on there, we'll go to log sources, and there we go. We can see our log source has been added. If we see over here, if I open this up, you can see that the name was set to Windows Server, Windows Authentication Server at 192.168.1.13. Protocol is syslog. There's Windows Authentication Server for description. Um, and so that's it. And then, so if we go back here, we can go to add a filter and then we will do filter by log source index and then we'll select our log source Windows authentication server. Once we do that, we can do a real time streaming to see real time how the logs are coming in or we can do the last 15 minutes. Five minutes and we can see there we go. Service entered the stop state and account log on into that server and we can go in there, see here the information in here. The service entered the stop state. So Windows installer service entered the stop state. This is probably from when we just completed the installation of the Win Collect agent. So that's it with installing a standalone WinCollect agent on Microsoft Windows Server 2019. Note that this tutorial will also apply to Windows Server 2012 up to 19. So you can do the same for 2012, 16, and 19. And hit the like button if you like this video. Please subscribe to our channel. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day.